finding of Isaac, the finding, right? The finding of the true cross and the binding of the Akada of Yisahak, right? Remember when Abraham was told to, uh, quote, sacrifice his son, you know, and that finding of the ram in the Sobek, right? The ram in the Sobek or the thicket. Now we're going to touch on the Yom Kippur and the Brit Hadasha or the Hadis, right? The Hadis Kidan, right? Or the New Covenant, right? I want ones might say the New Testament, right? Or the New Testimony, right? So one of the roles, right? One of the roles and faithful response abilities of I and I, beloved Moshiach Yeshua of Christos Iesus is that of the Lika Kahinat or in the Hebrew the Kahin or the Kohen Ha Gadol the high priest or the big priest priest Kohen Ha the Gadol the big right priest the big or the big priest the high priest who offered the true Kapara the kapara is the atonement, right? The at, alpha, alef, tav, right? Yeshua's signature in the scripture, at, one, ahadu, man, one mediator between God and man, at, one man, tav, or tau, right? Tawa, tawa, at one man's cross, right? At one man's mark, right? On your mark, <laughs> our woe get set and come out of Babylon. So he offered the true kapara, right? The atonement, the at one man tau, right? For I and I chat yat, for I and I, for the fallen, for the systemic anomaly, as the Matrix movie calls it. It's actually very accurate there when you understand what chat yat or what they call sin is. It's a, it's a systemic anomaly. Right, it's something that was not intended to be in the system, but man, having a lordship and having free will, brought it into the system. Right, he brought it in. He chose it in the in the creation that was created for man to be lord of. He made a bad choice. Speaking of Adam, and you know that the Eve was deceived, but Adam was the one who was disobedient, Hawari Apollos tells us. So by one man's disobedience, all right, became, that's the key word, not all were, but all became. You know, like people say, things are becoming worse and worse. They're becoming. So there's some process underway and one, like, how is this? Where did it happen? Where did it come from? We're getting to the root of it right here. And Yeshua's, his kapara, right, his atonement, right, by offering his own blood in the Holy of Holies that was made without human hands. And this is what debunks ones like uh, Con Wyatt, this guy who says he found the Ark of the Covenant. He said he found a lot of other things, too. And some of those things, uh, like the Red Sea wheel, the wheel under the Red Sea. But there's uh, another Dr. Kim from uh, Korea, right? From Korea, who really, you know, who really was able to expand on that and go much deeper. I'm trying to get that video and link you with that one right there. A uh, Dr. Kim, who was given access to Median, which is in Arabia, and he gets to see Sinai, Horeb, you know, see many of our ans things that our ancestors, where our ancestors were, and what they did to really prove that the exodus, right, of the black Hebrews, of the Ethiopian Hebrews and the black Hebrew Israelites was real and true of the Beta Israel and the mixed multitude, of course, because there was mixed multitude. Not all of them were, were Israelites, but they all were called to be Hebrews because it was the God of the Hebrews that Mashu Musa represented. Check it out. He never said the God of the Jews. Right, to the God of the Hebrews. Amen. So he offered his own blood in the Holy of Holies made without hands that was not made with hands. Now, this is a key point. 
this is a very significant point right here. And we want to pause on this point for a moment. Why do we say that it's, it's, it's a very uh, significant point? Well, it's a significant point because we know of the tabernacle, the tabernacle that we know of, right, or that we read of within Scripture, is clearly the tabernacle that was made by Moses and by the Israelites. However, we are told here in Scriptures that there is a, a holy of holies, a tabernacle, which is not made by hand. Then we also find that Moses... He got the pattern. He saw the pattern for the tabernacle that the Israelites would make, the Mishkan in the Hebrew, the Dinquan in the Royal Lamhark of the Metzav Kedus, and the Debtara. Interesting. The Debtara in the Ge'ez. Right? The Debtara. And this is speaking of that, that tabernacle, that tent. Right? That, that tent-like tabernacle. All right? So Moses was able to see the pattern of the tabernacle in heaven. So there was a heavenly tabernacle, a tabernacle in the Shemaim. But now what the scriptures tell us right here is that it's not made by hands. Wow. What kind of tabernacle is this in the heavens that's not made by human hands? Right. But this is where Yeshua offered his own blood. Being the Seha Elohim, being the Lamb of Abba Father. He offered his own blood after ascension and, and began his heavenly priestical function. This is what Revelation really talks about. When it, you can actually see where he goes from the outer court, right, to the to the to the holy, you know, and then he and then the holy of holies, and then the judgment, then the ark is seen in heaven. So what we see in Revelation, to interpret it, one must have that Hebrew, right? That Hebrew definition, that HD, that high definition. Now, Yeshua, Jesus Christos, Christos Jesus is I and I high priest after the order of Melchizedek. And this is in particular for my beloved for I and I Rastafari brothers and mansions, for the different mansions, because a lot of theories and ideas which don't bring glory or give glory to his majesty because it's not based on a diligent and a judicial Judah a judicial study of the word and his majesty our Abba father says for my part I glory in the Bible so without studying the scripture and diligently we might inadvertently bring shame and have brought shame to his name, right? So now's the time to repent, to turn around from that and and and, and fulfill his word and be obedient to I and I, Abba Father, who has given us all things in and through Yeshua HaMoshiach. Amen. Now, in the book of Hebrews, or the letter, rather, of Hebrews in, in the New Testament, right? Very, very important scripture. This is our holy liturgy, right? Our Kedase is Hebrews. What a Ibrawiya. Verse 1 and 2 of chapter 3. This is what is written. Therefore, holy brothers, wonder much, you who share in a heavenly calling, consider Yeshua, consider Jesus, the apostle and high priest of our confession of I and I. Confession, who was faithful to him who appointed him, just as Moses, Musa, Mashu also was faithful in all Elohim's house. But there's a difference between Moses, I and I lawgiver, the deliverer of I and I ancient patriarchs and tribes, and Yeshua HaMoshiach. What's the difference? Well, Moses was servant in all the house. Yeshua is the son, right? The servant is there for a time, but the son abides forever. But it's interesting how Hebrews chapter three, verses one to two is clarifying who I and I high priest 
right? Who I and our high priest is. This is why this is a letter. This is a didactic. This is a teaching, a teaching, could I say, to the Hebrews to explain to those who are still under the old covenant how Yeshua is truly Moshiach, Bain Ha Elohim. All right. Now, once again, let's move forward. We have to touch on a couple of points here, and we have a couple of minutes in this third part. So if you haven't seen the uh, first two parts, please do. We're just laying a basic foundation, right, for both who is the Kahin Hagadol. Because atonement, Dev Atonement, cannot be atonement in spirit and in truth without the consciousness of the high priest. And I know many mansions might use this is the I priest, that I priest, that. Well, is that I priest doing what his words say? They're not bringing glory. And besides, even if that I priest does try to do this, it's already done by one who is better, right? One who is better, one who has been appointed by I and I, Abba Father. Amen? So now, what is the importance of a blood sacrifice? Yes, people say, oh, y'all didn't talk about blood sacrifice. Yeah, what is the importance? See, because all you're seeing is a a pseudo type in the world or a counterfeit type when you hear about this one blood sacrifice and Illuminati blood sacrifice that one and that one blood sacrifice that's a mockery that's a satanic mockery but what's the importance of the true blood the true blood right true blood sacrifice the importance of the true blood sacrifice which is a substitutionary atonement cannot be overstated right in the Metzhaf, in the scriptures, since it constitutes what we call the fundamental means of at one man tau, atonement, that is given through the sacrificial system, right? And by overstanding Yahweh's system, all these other traditional and tribal and religious systems are better overstood. What they were perhaps um, sincerely um, intended, but with misdirection from Satan, right? Trying to approximate in the other sacrificial rituals of the other nations who Yahweh did not know. He only knew Israel. He only had that intimacy with us. That's why to whom more is given, more is required. So when we say why black people got to go through all this, well, who are we really? Then it becomes wow. Thank you, Father, for even sparing my life to recognize that truth. All right. So it's the fundamental means of atonement that's given throughout the sacrificial system. Indeed, this principle right, is virtually enshrined in the central text of sacrifice itself, which is Leviticus. In Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11. We have from the Hebrew, it says, let's get this right. It says, uh, Ki nefesh ha basar badam, hi uh, va'ani netativ lechem al ha mitzah be'ak le kapar al naf shotekem ki hadam hu be nefesh ye kapar or ye kapar. Depends on how they want to point that right there. But the key right there, Banefesh, Banefesh Ye Kapar. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it for you on the altar to atone, right? To make one again, right? Because the defilement of the people, the transgressions, that puts a breach between the Kedus Amlak and I and I is to be caduced people, right? Atonement for your souls, for it is the blood, it is the dam, right? Or the dem, right? Dam in the Hebrew, dem, ba'amrinya, the is the dem that makes atonement by the life. Be'nefesh ye kapar, right? Be'nefesh ye kapar. So a blood sacrifice is required, or rather was under the old covenant, the brit, Right, the Barit Ha Shana, it was required. Right, that blood sacrifice was required. Some say it is required, but it has already been fulfilled in Yeshua for those of us who receive Yeshua as Ha Mushiach, Bain Ha Elohim. For the Jews who don't, well, well, 
It's not well. So a blood sacrifice was required by yod Hey wehe for the issue of Chatiyat. Right? Leviticus 17, 11, it agrees with the, with the teaching that is found in the Barit Hadasha, right? Or within the new, within the new covenant, right? Within the new covenant, right? Or the New Testament in Hebrews 9, 22, right? In Hebrews 9, 22. So what do we have in Hebrews 9, 22? It reads, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission, right? There is no remission of chatiyat, without the shedding of blood. Now, that is, that's the principle there, right? That's the basic principle there. Now, we're not going to get into, some might say, was it good? Was it bad? Why did he do that? So forth and so on. Those are other subject matters. What we want to understand right here is what was right the role of the Kahin Ha Gadol so we can know what is the role of I and I high priest, the true I priest, right? Jesus Christos of I and I Rastafari. Amen. Amen. So um there's also something similarly that was written in, in, in ancient uh or uh, or old Jewish writings. Some of this, some of these Jewish writings come down to us today, and they call them different Talmuds. And Talmud basically means teaching. So in this um, Talmud Yoma five a, it's written that there is no atonement without blood. So the ideas, right? The ideas that we have, right? The ideas that we have, and we find within Hebrews in the New Testament also correspond to certain ancient and early Hebraic and Israelitish and Levitical teaching, right? So the substitutionary shedding of blood is called the life for life principle. It it is essential to the true at one man tau with Yahweh Elohim. Now Yeshua, he offered his own body, right? His own body, he offered his own body. And it's an interesting scripture too that even speaks on that. We'll touch on that. He offered his own body to be the perfect sacrifice for Chatiyat. Because he is the real Neo, if you understand it like that. He is the real Neo. Neo in the Matrix is like a Hollywood counterfeit in a sense. But if you understand the scripture, you can see what they were seeking to mock or imitate, right? Um, by his, by Yeshua's shed blood, we are given complete atonement before Yahweh if we receive it based on Imuna, based on faith. Right? You have to understand that key there. For our sake, he made him to be Chatiyat, who knew no Chatiyat, so that in him we might become the righteousness, that we might become the what? The righteousness Right, the Zidic, right, or the Zidic, or the Zadic, the Zedek of Elohim, according to Second Corinthians five twenty one, the Levitical system was based on animal sacrifices, like many of the ancient primitive systems of humanity. Remember, humanity fell, man fell, so he fell to the point almost a little above an animal. Right, that's not how he was created, but because of the satanic the serpent deception and man falling for it right he basically forfeited his dominion and he became a slave to chatiyat to sin the systemic anomaly so the levitical system of animal sacrifice including the elaborate yom kippur ritual was meant to foreshadow to paint a picture of the true and the abiding sacrifice of yeshua as the means of I and I reconciliation with Ha Elohim. You know what that means? That apart from Yeshua, we are enemies of God. That we are we are his enemies, right? Because we have that with which is in our nature that he did not create, but man, through his disobedience, drew to himself. Right? In other words, he 
he he he exchanged his 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 glory for for shame in the deception and in the disobedience concerning the Ganet to Aden. So through Yeshua, we have reconciliation with Elohim. Now the Berit Yeshana, right? The Berit Yeshana, Berit Hashana, Berit Yeshana, which is the old covenant, it provides a shadow, right, of the substance that is revealed in the Berit Chadasha, in the new covenant. In other words, the old covenant, to say like the Old Testament, it provides a shadow. It, it paints a sketch, a, a picture of the true substance that is revealed in the new covenant. If the old covenant had been sufficient to provide a permanent solution to the problem, to the systemic anomaly of our chatiyat, of the sin nature, of the virus, there would never, right, have been a need for the new, the Hadith Kidan or the Brit Chadasha to supersede it. And Hebrews chapter 8, verse 7 speaks more on that. So under the old covenant, sacrifices merely covered Chatiyat. All it did was cover, right? Like somebody give you cover. You still are guilty, but they just, they just give you some time, buy you some time. But under the new covenant, these uh this khatiyat are is taken out of the way, right? Entirely out of the way. Hebrews 7 27, Hebrews 9 and 12, Hebrews 9, 25, 28. There is no more need for the continual animal ritual sacrifices since Yeshua, Hamushia, Meshihenu, right, provided the once and for all sacrifice for the entirety of of Ayanai Chat Yat or Sin Nature, Hebrews 9, 11 to verse 14, Hebrews 9, 24 to 28, Hebrews 10, 11 to 20. Bonet, in truth, Bemet, right? Yeshua HaMoshiach, Jesus Christos, is the propitiation or the expiation, right, of Ayanai Chat Yat. Now, the Greek word that's used in Romans 3, 25, 1 John 2 and 2, and 1 John 4 and 10 is known as helasterion. Helasterion. Helasterion is the same word that's used in the Septuagint for the caporet. Now, remember what the caporet is? Let's bring the caporet in here again. All right? Here's the caporet. All right? The caporet. It's right there. That's the caporet. The caporet is the what they call the mercy seat, but really it's the place of atonement or the 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 covering, the cover of the ark in which is the law, his pure will. Right in the holy of holies, which was sprinkled with the blood of the sacrifice on this day, on this one day and this one day only. Right now, in Hebrews 9.24, it reads, For Messiah, Moshiach, Christos, Christ, the anointed, if you please, has entered not into holy places made with hands, which are copies, almost like an earthly carbon, literally a carbon copy of the true things, but into heaven, into the Shammai, the Shammayim, into the heavens itself. Now to appear in the presence of Ha Elohim on our behalf, on I and I behalf, nor was it to offer himself repeatedly. Like he has to do this every year, you know, as the high priest enters the holy places every year with blood. Notice the high priest, the earthly, the human, the Hebrew high priest, right? They entered with blood that was not his own. For then he would have had to suffer repeatedly since the foundation of the world. But as it is, as it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of the ages to put away chatiyat by the sacrifice of himself. So Messiah, so Christ, so the anointed, having been offered once to bear the sin of many will appear a second time not to deal with chatiyat, not to deal with sin, 
but to save those who are eagerly awaiting for him. This is Hebrews 9, 24, and then Hebrews 10 and 14 says, For by one offering he hath perfected, made perfect, where he said, it is fulfilled, kula, it is, it is finished, it is perfected, right? It is fitzum, tefetzame, right? Perfected forever, that them that are sanctified, that are set apart. Right? So, what do those who have a messianic mindset, in other words, we would say a Christian mindset, but that has gotten so much confusion, right? We want to touch on Yom Kippur confession and the book of life. But what do those who are messianic, right, who has a consciousness of the Messiah, even the black Messiah, our black Lord and Savior, Shuha Moshiach, once we ask, what, what will we do regarding um, Yom Kippur? Some say, do we fast? Do we afflict ourselves? Do we confess our sins? Or do we rejoice in the knowledge that we are, that I and I are forgiven of all our sin nature, the chatiyat, because of our faith in Yeshua's perfect avoda, right? As our kahen gadol of the new covenant. In other words, should we be sad, right? And this is why we said fast or not to fast. You know, we didn't even come across these notes right here. But should we be sad and afflicted or should we be happy and comforted? Well, here's what First John 1 and 9 says. And not just for that one day, but for every day that is called today. If we confess, if we admit our chatiyat, he is faithful and just to forgive us our chatiyat, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1 and 19. Now, in the post-temple period, or what they call the post-temple Judaism, just a couple more words right here. We're going to conclude this. In the post-temple um, Judaism, what's known as rabbinical Judaism, this is after the true people, Right, um, were cast away from their heritage, speaking of the black Hebrews, Ethiopian Hebrews, and Hebrews Israelites. It is customary for Jews, right, to wish one another, and they say, uh, Gemar Chatema, right, Gemar Chatema Tova, right, or a good sealing, right, to say being sealed up, right, a good sealing. Gemar, right? Gemar, chat, uh, chatema, chatema, like atem, atem, machetem in the Amharic, a tova or toba, right? A good sealing during the period that's known as the 10 days of awe, the 10 days running from Yom Teruah, uh, Rosh Hashanah, to Yom Kippur. Now, the reason for this is that according to the Judaic uh, tribe or tradition, the writing of Jah's verdict for I and I life, for your life, occurs on Rosh Hashanah. But the sealing of the verdict, the sealing of that, it occurs on Yom Kippur. In other words, Elohim, in his mercy and in his truth, he gives I and I another 10 days to do to Shuba, to, to, to return, um, to, to, to repent, right? Before sealing I and I fate. But ultimately, because he gave us free will, it is up to I and I. It is up to us. And our teshuba, right, to either save ourselves and save ourselves from, from that ultimate annihilation, from Ha Elohim's decree of death. Our merits, well, mitzvot, right, some say that's the key. Teshuva, prayer, charity, which is love, they deliver I and I. From the evil decree, so turning, repenting, prayer, speaking with Father, speaking with the source, right, and charity, right, doing acts of love, of selfless love, as Yeshua HaMoshiach has done. This is what deliver I and I, right, from the evil decree. Of course, being messianic, messianic uh, Rastafari or of some would say Jews or 
Christians, right? We have a permanent sealing for good by way of the grace and the love of Ha Elohim given to us, given to I and I in Jesus Christos and in Yeshua, I and I Messiah. Ephesians, Ephesians 1 and 13, Ephesians 4 and 30, 2 Corinthians 1, 21 to 22, all point that out, right? So please get a chance and just read over it. Make a note of it. Pause the video here if you can, right? Now, the Torah's statement that sacrificial blood was offered upon the altar to make atonement for our souls, Leviticus 17, 11, it finds its application in what is known as the blood work. What is the blood work of Yeshua? That blood work of Yeshua was upon the cross, the Meskel at Moriah, according to Romans 5, 11. The substitutionary shedding of blood based on the life for life principle is essential to a to the true atonement at one man's cross with Ha Elohim. The ordinances of the Levitical priesthood were just types and shadows of the coming substance that would give I and I eternal atonement with Ha Elohim, Hebrews 8 and 10. Because Yeshua, right, and because of Yeshua, we have a Kahen HaGadol, right, a high priest of the better covenant based on better promises and hopes and expectations of good, confident expectation of good, Hebrew 8 and 6. For this reason, it is an entirely, it is entirely appropriate for us in the, with the mind of Moshiach, right? And that mindfulness of our black Lord and Savior to celebrate Yom Kippur and to give Toda, right? To give thanks, to Yahweh, to he who be who he be, his divine majesty, for permanent Hatima Tova to Kedamawi Hala Salasi, for what he has given to I and I as Rastafari through the testimony and through the salvation of his son. Now, it must also be always remembered that the Torah, right? is a function word. When we speak about Torah, we're speaking of a function word, an action word that expresses our response ability in light of the covenantal acts of Ha Elohim. As the author of the book of Hebrews, or I like to say the authors of the book of Hebrews make clear, when there is a change in priesthood, there is by necessity, right, a change of Torah a change of law as well, Hebrews 7 and 12. The Levitical priesthood expresses the Torah of the covenant of Sinai or Sinai, right? Just as the greater priesthood of Yeshua, Ainai Rastafari expresses the Torah of the new covenant, of the true covenant of the King of Kings in Christ. Give thanks, brothers and sisters, if we get an opportunity, we'll touch on a continuance of this. Shalom Ras Tafari.